Hey, um, so if you don't know who I am, because I haven't, I've been like around the last two weeks, um, we just had some awesome people come in and, and give some different voice to what God's doing. My name is Casey, and I serve as the lead pastor, one of the pastors here at the Avenue Church, and uh, that too is one of my great joys uh, in life. And so, hey, if you have a Bible, um, we're going to be in primarily First Corinthians today, um, but we always need to set up kind of where we're going, and you're going to hear this verse. If I'm doing my job, you'll probably hear this verse close to every Sunday, and uh, it's like our anchor verse for Vision 2020, and it's found in uh, John, you don't need to turn there. We're just going to throw it on the screen here for you. It says, Jesus talking to his disciples, which in turn uh, means you and I. And this is what he says before he's getting ready to, to take off for the first time. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going uh, to the Father, Jesus, promising that we are going to do the works that he does and that we're actually going to do greater works. And that's where Vision 2020 is founded, in this idea that there's, there's these greater works, these greater things is how you could translate it as well, that, that are coming. And it doesn't mean that we're going to do things above what Jesus did. It just means that we're going to do them in greater capacity than he did during his three-year ministry. Because when spirit-filled, gift-using body of Christ believers gather together and go out on mission— you can, we, we accomplish the greater things than Jesus did just in his three-year ministry. And he promised it would happen. Now, what were the works that he did? Man, he healed, he fed, he walked on water. He did some crazy stuff, right? And so we believe that the access to that stuff is still present. Like, the door didn't close to doing those, those, those great works, but all of those great works actually pointed to the greater work of seeing people move from death to life. I've seen people put their faith in Christ, be forgiven of their sin, and be ushered into the eternal presence both now and forever in a relationship with God. And we, we, so we get to do that. And we're super, uh, we're super pumped about that. And so um, here, here's some of the things that we're saying is that there's got to be a culture that goes along with that. And that culture has four sort of streams to it, if you will. It's all on your outline if you want to uh, follow along. There's a stream of expectation, hospitality, which we'll talk about in a couple weeks, uh, empowerment, and invitation. And, um, you know, what we're, what we're saying here is that uh, we're going to spend weeks on each of those streams, and we're in the expectation stream right now. And really, the expectation stream is not about what you're expecting, it's about who you're expecting upon. And basically, we're, we're expecting greater things, but in order for that to happen, we're going to need another person. We need another person. We don't need another strategy. We don't need another pep talk from me. We don't need another, you know, uh, fundraising campaign. We need another person. And the other person is the Holy Spirit. Jesus promises that we will have the Holy Spirit. And so, now I was thinking about um, this message and the idea of spiritual gifts and, and things like that. And it made me think of uh, one of one of the gifts that I have just recently gotten that so blessed my heart. I was on the couch the other day. It was, it was a couple of months ago. And... Um, you know, I was doing this thing, just FYI, I, I don't think I've ever gotten a new phone, okay? I'm like a phone consignment store, <laughs> like, that's how I do my life. So my phone breaks, and then we figure out who's like more techie than I am, um, and we just say, hey, can we buy the phone that you're not using? <laughs> Go in your drawer and pull out your iPhone fill in the blank, and, and can, we, can I just buy it from you? Because my iPhone, like, 2 quit working finally. So, like, I need to upgrade to the 4 and, like, you know, get one that really is super fast and stuff like that. And so, um, anyways, I was on the couch the other day, and I had my uh, 6, and I don't know if there's a number behind it or not. Like, it was a 6, whatever, S. And, uh, and it was doing the thing that both my phones and my cars do, which is die slowly, <laughs> okay? So, like, that's sort of our our season of life right now. We're in, we, we do slow deaths with both cars and phones, and we just kind of milk them until we can't do it anymore, and it becomes more expensive to keep what we have. You, anybody relate to that? Am I alone? Okay, cool, cool, cool. I need the rest of you to keep spending lots of money on your phones, okay, so I can get them when mine break. I'm just saying that. You have my approval to do that. Not really. Anyways, um, I, I'm on the couch, and my phone is doing the thing where it's like, ah, I think it's, I, I, you know, I don't think it's working, and I, well, it, it is a little bit. It's work, it's teasing me, <laughs> you know, it's teasing me. It's working enough to keep me hoping for it, and maybe I just need to charge it, and the battery, why does it keep dying in the midst of, like, things like that? And so, you know, you're doing CPR, like, <laughs> hoping your phone works, and it's like, yes! Um, so it finally got to the point where my wife, uh, who, 
who is like our financial um, chief operator, and she's definitely more the saver and the sensible one. And I'm the one who's like, if we have money, it was meant to be spent, so let's get after it, you know? And so like, we kind of have two different perspectives on money. And so she's, she's the awesome one, right? Uh, when it comes to finances and, and uh, all of a sudden I'm on the couch and the, she signals to the kids, I don't like necessarily see this. And they come out with this box, this, this gift bag. And they just, they don't like say anything. They just hand it to me. And um, uh, this was like early December. And I take it, and it actually says, because this is how we do gifts in our family, we, we reuse even gift bags, right? So I think it even said my nephew's name on it, like Aiden. I'm like, okay, well, thanks. What am I supposed to do? So I look in the thing, and, and there's, a, there's a brand new, like, iPhone 10. And, and I, like, I... I I don't know what to, what do you do with that? You know, when you're like, when you upgrade four generations of a phone, like, <laughs> I'm like, uh, 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 like for me, what, like, what do I, okay. And so she, in her like loving way, she's like, basically, I'm tired of seeing you suffer there. It was supposed to be for Christmas, but here, take it. Get a phone that works. And so it was amazing, right? So I open it up. I'm like, oh my goodness. I'm like all the people that I borrow and beg from. Like I'm now them, you know, for a week or so until the 11 and the 12 come out. But whatever, like, so, so he, here it is. And it was like this really beautiful gift. And what was cool about the gift was I totally nerded out at the beginning. And I started, because um, you can do crazy stuff on the 10 that you couldn't do on the 6. So I would send like these, I think they're called uh, animal emojis, you know, and so it's got like my face in the, in, the, in the face of a monkey being like, yo, happy Friday, and I'd send it out. People would be like, new phone, you know, like, when, when is this going to end? So I just totally nerded out, and I was like, oh, I can do this, and it was like really super cool, and it's like face recognition, so it was like, here I am, it's on, and you know, and like, so I'm totally into using uh, my new phone. I'm, at the beginning, I didn't really know the full functionality of it, but as I've gotten to know it, and by, by both, you know, you, you, I didn't do a ton of reading, because you know you learn by doing, right? Like, that's usually the best way of doing it, and you can do the tutorial, but I'm just like, let me get after it, you know, and, and so, um, you know, like, I've learned more and more of the functions of my phone by using it. What's really cool is I have been able to like uh, experience amazing blessing both for myself and for those around me. So like even just this week, uh, I think maybe there were three, four, probably more, I was trying to think, just this week of text messages that I sent out, just encouraging and blessing people where they were and like what God was doing in their life. And, and I just got to speak truth to them through the gift of, of this phone. And I've been able to connect way more through social media based on kind of like, like our lives, the life of the church through this phone. And, and, and I've been able to be connected to my family. And like imagine life um, outside of my phone. I, I could still do it. I did it for a while. I'm, I'm of a generation where I lived some without a phone and some with a phone. But, but like the gift of this phone and beginning to understand this gift has been a tremendous blessing and advancement of the gospel, both even in my life as I use it for personal uses and in the lives of, of you. I mean, if you know me well enough, you know that if you're like, hey, what's the scripture have to say about fill in the blank? And sometimes I'll be able to like shoot you right back, like here's what it means, here's what it means. But you know I'll often be like, well, I don't know. Give me just a second. Let me Google that. <laughs> and like, I'm, I'm one of those guys. And so as I've gotten to see and, and use more and more of this phone, I've realized, man, like what an amazing gift. And if I can leave you with any image today, it would be the image of gifts. And you can see it right there. It would be the image that we've already celebrated the main gift of Jesus Christ that you're going to get. Like it doesn't get better than Jesus, and Jesus is all you need, Period. But what we see in the scriptures to be very true is that God has given us additional gifts that help point our own hearts and the hearts of those around us to the ultimate gift of Jesus and help us to do these greater works. They're called spiritual gifts. What do you think my wife would have done, those of you who know my wife, if um, while I stayed on the couch, I received the gift, I was thankful for the gift, but I never opened or used the phone? What do you think my wife would have done? If you know my wife, 
she would have given me some grace, like, oh, he's super tired or whatever, you know, maybe, maybe he'll get to it tomorrow or whatever. And she would have been internally like, what is this guy's problem? And then eventually she would have been like, boy, if you don't use that phone, I'm going to give you my six and take it for myself. She would have been upset. She would have been hurt. She would be like, man, I saved. She saved a long time for this particular gift. And it would have actually probably offended and, and grieved her heart that I didn't use, explore, and see the benefits of the gift that she gave from her heart to mine. You know, I think sometimes that's how we approach spiritual gifts. I mean, we have a God who has brought us into the family through the blood of Christ and then wants to use us in radical and beautiful and consistent ways by giving us gifts. And if we don't know what our specific spiritual gifts are, and we don't know how to use them, especially as it pertains to the body of Christ and the outside world, then it's almost like we're still on the couch saying, thanks so much. I'll just get to that later. We don't want to do that. We can't stay there any longer. So, so let's take a look here at what the scriptures have to say about our spiritual gifts. And today we're going to talk about sort of the, the purpose of them and then, and then how do we do the next right thing? How do we take a step forward toward understanding and then opening and exploring um, our gifts. And, and I'm in 1 Corinthians, and Paul writes to the church uh, at, at Corinth, and he's writing to this church that has a lot of issues. But then by chapter 12, he kind of shifts gears. And, I mean, they had, like, sexual purity issues. They, had, they, they were just kind of a mess. And, um, and, and Jesus loves messy church. Don't get me wrong. It wasn't like one church is better than the other. But, but he addresses some of those things, and then he shifts gear. He doesn't stop there with just, hey, like, get your, get your act together, and this is what it means to live a new life. He then talks to them about this very important issue to the heart of the Father, and that's spiritual gifts. And he begins in chapter 12 by saying, I don't want you to be uninformed. I don't want you to not have proper understanding about this. So the heart of God is that part of our new life in Christ is that all believers get at least one spiritual gift. Oftentimes we have two or three gifts, and, and I'm going to talk to you about, like, how would you know that and how can you best use them even here at the Avenue Church. It's going to come important. It's going to be very important to you, your outline and your, um, but even more than that, the, the insert that you have in your bulletin today, because what we've done is we've attached some of the spiritual gifting that you will begin to understand with places you can serve here at the Avenue Church. And even go so, go, gone so far as to give you the contact of where to take that next step when you identify your gift and what area it could be used here at the Avenue Church. So, so we've really put a, a cool resource in your hand this morning. And Paul's like, I don't want you to be uninformed. And at the Avenue Church, man, we don't want you to be uninformed. That, that would be a travesty. We don't want you to stay on the couch and keep looking at your gift. And so um, down in verse 4, this is what Paul writes to the church. He says, now there are a variety of gifts, but the same spirit. And there are a variety of service, but the same Lord. And there are a variety of activities, but the same God who empowers them all in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. For the common good. So we want to um, break this down here a bit and uh, kind of look, look through some of the, the actual theology and the teaching behind this. And so a couple things um, uh, pop out to us as we begin to understand the fact that each believer— in Christ, this is not a natural talent, it's a spirit has been given something like from the Holy Spirit for the advancement of the gospel, for the greater works. And so let's, let's kind of um, walk through this particular passage and see, see what the Lord teaches us. And, and the first thing that, to highlight is the fact that there are gifts. There are, there are gifts. And on your outline, you've got two sort of uh, descriptions of the gifts. And one of those is a fill in the blank. Sometimes when you write things down, it brings it to life more and maybe Maybe that's not your thing. That's okay. But, but the two words that you're looking at there under, underneath the idea that, that you've been given a gift are that they are um, both given and empowered. Given and empowered by the Holy Spirit. So we, we need to understand that we have things um, in, in our life that are, are not just natural talents. Many of us might just be naturally talented at certain things. Like uh, I have a three-year-old son. And he's fast. 
Like legitimately, if my wife has any kind of heel on, he's gone. He beats her every time. And he, I think he might know it. I don't know. Mitch had to chase him down at the beach baptisms the other day. And, and so like, he's fat. That's, that's not necessarily a spiritual gift. My little three-year-old is just a quick dude, okay? And so that's a natural gift. And, and many of us have natural giftings just kind of based on our DNA or whatever. But what's cool is when you get born again, right, you get new DNA. And part of that new DNA is like new, new gifting, if you will. And so it's different than just being good at something. Every believer is given actually a gift that is spiritual in nature with the potential of having divine results. Uh, I'm, I'm borrowing a, a quote on somebody who explains spiritual gifts this way. Uh, he's a commentator named Clark, and he describes spiritual gifts as um, gracious endowments leading to miraculous results. Spiritual gifts. Um, and so these are undeserved things. They're not natural. Uh, they're, they're, em they're empowered by the Spirit. And so um, there, there's this real truth that every one of you has something. You might know very much what it is, or you might not. And we're going to talk about what some of the spiritual gifts are. But, but there's something that God has given you. There is, there is a gift that, is, that you have that is specific to you. Um, that, that God has given you to help make much of Jesus, both in your own heart and in the hearts of others. And, and, and so you need to understand that God's given you something. If you don't know what it is, it's okay. It's not like, we're, this is not a guilt trip. It's just like, man, like, let's find out what's going on here. Let's, let's check that out. And so um, it's given and it's empowered, which means the more you check it out, the more you use it, the, the, the better you'll get at it. But like, the more you'll experience God's power. I, I have uh, a spiritual gift um, of teaching. I, I'm, I'm not necessarily naturally a great teacher. I don't know a ton of stuff. I've, nobody's ever been like, that dude's a genius. Like, I've never been mistaken for, for John O'Brien. I've never, like, uh, like, it's not necessarily my natural thing that I maybe know a lot of stuff. But, but some of you will say, like, like, man, I don't know what it is, but it feels like you were speaking, like, right to where I was. And... And what, what happened on that particular Sunday, I don't know, like God just used it and, and I was here and then I, I like, you know, Derek Green comes in Christmas Eve and I'm giving this message outside and I don't even know what I'm preaching on, but like he goes from the point of darkness and death to like <laughs> leading in our church and beautiful family. And why? And it wasn't because of my preaching, but I'm saying like there was a moment that happened on Christmas Eve message where it was like God began to do this work in his life. Why? Not because I had this awesome Christmas Eve message, but because like one of my gifts is teaching, and I've just tried to lean into it and use it. And what God does is he meets you in a way that I could never imagine. Because, you know, most of the time, if you ever do this, you walk off stage, it's just not that good. You're like, idiot, find another job. That was horrible. <laughs> like, and then you guys are like, yeah, and then you this and that. And I'm like, oh, yeah. That, oh, yeah. It's because that's God's gift. He's just given me that, not because I've earned it. It's just one of, one of my gifts. And so that's how God works. He does divine, miraculous things when people just make themselves available to using their gifts, even if it's kind of awkward and clunky, even eight years in. So um, given and empowered. Secondly, uh, variety. You need to know that there is a variety of gifts. And, and what I love about that is it conveys two things. Um, it conveys, you see this in verse four, uh, it can, the, the idea of variety, it conveys a beauty and then the blank would be a functionality. There's a beauty to the variety of gifts. Um, it, it, it's like I was reading um, in our, reading, our church reading plan this week and, and talked about Paul seeing some believers. I think he had just got to Rome and he saw some believers and he was encouraged just because he saw the believers. It's so beautiful when we gather on Sunday morning because I get to remember how beautiful the body of Christ is. Like your variedness of the body of Christ, your varied stories and colors and backgrounds and experiences. I mean, it's so beautiful. And so the, the idea here is that God has given a variety of gifts because it's just more beautiful that way. It's a tapestry is way more beautiful than one homogeneous dot repeated over and over and over again. So uh, incredibly thankful that we all don't have teaching gifts. Incredibly thankful that we all don't have administrative gifts. Incredibly thankful that we all don't have hospitality gifts. Because that also means number two in that blank is functionality. It means we actually need one another. I, I have to have your gifts. You need 
Mitch, you need, you need Lois Bacosha. You need Susan Sharp. You need the greater body if we're going to function well. Because if it was just one gift on repeat, we could never go anywhere or do anything. The Bible talks about this in the metaphor of a body. It would be like all of us being the right leg. I mean, you could, maybe, um, you could maybe work on this for a while. Well, I guess I can't use these either. Well, I can't even really talk. So if I was just the right leg, this is what the body of Christ would look like. I could do this. I could do, I could kick. And like eventually it's just like, well, you're not going anywhere. You actually look kind of ridiculous. There's a beauty and encouragement when the gifts are brought together and we get to see different gifts rising up. And there's also a functionality. Like we need what you, we need this. I need you to know your gift and use it. The city of Delray, the area of Palm Beach County, if we're ever going to see any kind of evangelical needle move where we start talking about the numbers of lost people following Christ, you got to know your gift. You've got to use your gift. Or we're going to continue like we have probably for the last, I don't know how many decades, at 3% in the South Florida area of people who follow Christ. We can't, we can't stay there. Thirdly, um, it's, it's for the common good. It's for the common good. Um, scripture talks about this in the very next chapter where it says you've got to use your, your gift in the context of love. And um, Ephesians 4 says that there's, there's gifts given to the church for the building up of the body of Christ. And we see that there's two aspects to this. There's the aspect of maturity and the aspect of unity. That the church would mature together and the church would unify. So you can't... Yeah. So I baptized my 13-year-old son last Saturday, right? And it was super, super cool. Um, and you know what started to like, you know, he had talked about it a little bit before, but, but Alpha Youth Day was a real big event in his life. And, and Sam and the community and, and the Stacy and Nate and all the, Richard and everyone, Danielle, everyone who's involved. Like, I had a voice, our home had a voice in his life. But he's, it seems like he started to, like, blossom when he got around the, 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 the fullness of people using their gifts, not just daddy talking to him about how to see the gospel in baseball. And what was really cool, because I love doing that, but not everybody loves doing that, and my son needed to hear other voices. So if my son is to ever mature as a believer in Christ, he needs you knowing and using your gifts. It can't just happen within our family. He can grow. He can fall in love with Jesus. It can be really like a really cool story. It's just not going to be the, to the fullness of what God has for him unless we are all engaged in this together. And so there's a, there's a maturity and then there's a unity to where this isn't just like every individual church has all the gifts. What we're saying is the capital C church has all the gifts needed to see this radical gospel renewal. And so when we take a movement like Church United, that's why we are giving ourselves fully to that. Because it's not that the, the fullness of the gifts is present in the Avenue Church. It's that the fullness of the gifts is present in the capital C Church. And the more we begin to know and function in our gifts together in the context of family, that's where we see 3% go to 6%, go to 9%. And then Jesus comes back. That's why Church United is such a big deal to us. There's both maturity and unity because the gifts are out there. The gifts are at Trinity. The gifts are at Seacrest. The gifts are at Quezon. The gifts are at First Pres. Like, they're out there among us. And so we have to move together. I mean, that's how the world gets captivated, right? Jesus prays that, the, that they would be one, not just for functionality, but so that the world would know. There's a captivating essence to the church moving as one where lost people get saved. And we can't afford to miss out on that. So what'd you get? What'd you get? I mean, like on Christmas morning, I, I don't know about you, but you know, once, once you were able to connect with people outside of your family, it would always kind of be like, oh, what'd you get? Like, I'm curious, what, you know, what, what, what was your big gift or whatever? And, and, and so I, you know, 
on, a, on the level, I just want to ask you guys, what'd you get? Like, do you know what you got? Or, or are you still in the phase of kind of like, no, okay, I'm just beginning to understand I actually have a gift, and I'm curious to how to open it and, and like how to figure it out. Well, that's cool. Wherever you might be, if you know what you got, that would be awesome to like share that with us and for us to engage on how to connect you. If you don't know what you got, that's super cool too. Let us walk alongside you and help you uh, in that. And so there's, uh, you'll, you'll see it on your outline as well, there's, a, there's gift passages for you to explore. Um, in this particular passage, you'll see a few of the gifts mentioned. Um, it, you know, that, that uh, it talks about, I think, the gift of wisdom, um, speaking in tongues, the gift of, uh, I, I forget the, the other gifts here that are, that are present in this particular passage, but there are, there are a few passages in the New Testament that explore the gifts. And, and there's not one passage that's exhaustive to all the gifts, but if you look at all the passages, you begin to see, wow, there's, there's quite a few spiritual gifts that are given that I'd like to explore. I wonder which one pertains to me. And, and you know, like it's, it's not like there's any sort of official, you're going to see me walk through kind of a list here. There, it's not as though there's, there's any, like, official, hey, this is, these are the only gifts. But, but what we've done is we've, we've partnered with an actual um, uh, organization that helps people identify their gifts. And it's through an assessment and, um, and you kind of are able to, I'll talk to you about how, how to do that, but you're able to, to plug in and connect and uh, kind of see, like, what, what is it that maybe the Lord has given you? And then, and then what does that mean for your using of it? But, but so what'd you get, uh, what they do here on this particular uh, website and organization, they, they kind of group the gifts into, into these, uh, these uh, sort of um, offerings, if you will, and, or these categories. There's serving category, uh, foundational, uh, re revelatory, and uh, manifestation. And so the serving uh, category would be uh, more of like the hands-on stuff, like, like you're amazing and you've been gifted at maybe like the gift of hospitality or you might have uh, the gift of administration. And so, so there, there are gifts, all of these are needed and there are gifts that function more in the category of serving. And then, then there's foundational gifts. And these might be more of the ones that you find in Ephesians 4. Um, apostles, prophets, evangelists, shepherds, teachers, things like that. And so um, now, now we, don't, we don't believe in, in capital A apostles anymore. So we believe that there were the apostles that helped birth the church. But we do believe that there are people who are given that apostolic spirit of being able to birth new things, take the gospel to new places, break into new grounds. And so the foundational gifts which all of these, you know, there, there's multiple gifts under each of these, okay? And, and so the, the foundational gifts are foundational to birthing, um, like, new churches, new church plants. We, we're planting Michael James, and, and we're exploring planting other guys, and it's like, what would be foundational needed for that particular uh, church plant and to, and to see new ministries happen? And then there's uh, uh, revel revelatory gifts, and th these are things that reveal things about the heart of God. So you might be gifted in the gift of um, wisdom, you might have the gift of wisdom, and um, the, the gift of wisdom would, would basically say, like, uh, you, you don't just know the Word of God, but you have this innate ability when you're in a situation to know, like, what that person needs to hear, needs to do at that moment. You, you, it's, it's just, it's not intuition. It's not your smart. It's that some of you have been given the gift of wisdom, and, and when you're put in situations you're just actually really gifted divinely at helping to see things and, and see, help, help people see what the next right step is. Gift of, gift of, so you're revealing, helping to reveal the heart of God to people. And then there's the manifestations. And these are, these are giftings where God sort of shows out. He sort of, sh he shows out, and, and, and these would, would be things like, you know, um, speaking in tongues and, and the interpretation of tongues and other, other sort of gifts that, that manifest like, wow, the supernatural power of God, like what just happened there? And, and we could go into a whole message on, on speaking in tongues and things like that, and you'll see that if, if you have some of the manifestation gifts, one of your, your next right things to do is to come to the leadership of the Avenue Church and discuss what you think that is and us help place you in a, in a way where that's going to make much of Jesus. Uh, and, and so there, there are all sorts of different gifts, like I said, attached to each of these. But each of these giftings, categories, they all point back to Jesus and they all are for the common good, the maturity and the building up 
of, of the body of Christ so that the world might know. And so um, as we, as we kind of close up our, our time today, and I'm going to make some practical suggestions, uh, I want you to know, just, just really simply, we can't stay here. We cannot stay where we are. I'm not going to take a show of hands, but, but just in your mind, do a brief inventory of like, do you know your top one or two spiritual gifts, and are you leaning into them? Are you using them? Are you practicing them? Are you actually uh, getting better at them? I just, I don't believe that we can stay where we are. It's okay to recognize the fact that we need to, to move in this place, that we need to grow in this area. It's just not okay to stay here because we have a crazy vision. Allison Hicks, who was here with us last week, I love the way that she vision cast. She's like, man, I want a vision that I can't get my arms around and that God's gonna have to show up if it's gonna come true. I love the way she dreams, and that's some of the stuff that motivated Vision 2020, seeing 200 baptisms in two years, like through our, you know, eight-year little, little church. Like, that's a vision where God would have to show up, and one of the most significant ways for churches that are on mission and seeing lost people get saved is that they have spirit-filled believers both knowing and using their gifts. I think that's your last two blanks in your outline. Both knowing and using their gifts. We can't stay in a place where you don't know, understand, and then use your gifts. The time is too precious, and Jesus is worth too much. I don't know if you have seen some of the miraculous results around here. I'm just going to name a few names and uh, then close our time with, with a brief, brief story of God. I mean, maybe you know Brady and Lauren Witt. And you know how they've, they've decided to use their gift of hospitality. You've probably been affected by it this morning. Maybe you know Danielle and the way that she's decided to use her gift of administration and makes all things beautiful behind the scenes. And, and maybe you know Joe and Susan Sharp, and I don't know that they've, get, they've sort of tested out under the mercy gift, but you know that, that, that they have loved well the children of the Avenue Church. And maybe you know Susie Sweeten and the way that she's used her gift of wisdom and discernment through the course of redemption, and you've been set free for some bondage that you've walked with for years. And maybe you know Jerry and Liz and the way they, they've used their gifts of teaching and counseling and things like that. And, and maybe you've experienced the goodness that God has brought through them. Maybe you know Lynn Johnson and her up-and-coming gift of leadership and the way that she's going to be such an impactful um, uh, member and, and partner here in this move of God. Maybe you know Jerry Witt and the way that she just, what, what, what she touches because of her gift of leadership and, and, she, and I'm sure she's got some apostleship sort of thing going on there. Like she, there's multiplication effect and you're gonna hear more about an alpha ministry and her leadership there, man. I just wanna say it's your turn. I just want to say it's your turn. Check out this, this uh, website here. It's, it's just going to be us, I think, um, theavenuechurch.com slash spiritual gifts. Uh, and and if, you, if, if you just kind of type this in your phone even right now or you, you jot it down, I, I'm sure we've, we've given it to you. This is a place where you can go and um, you can just click the link and it'll take you to the spiritual gifts assessment where you'll answer a battery of questions. It might take you 20 minutes, something like that. And what they do is, is they, they analyze the answers to your questions and then they give you back your top like three gifts. So, so you, like I think I have gifts, my top three gifts are like gift of teaching, uh, gift of leadership, and uh, I, forget, I forget the third one, it might be, it might be knowledge, I don't know. What, but so like you, you, you have your top two or three and then it gives you kind of like the Greek understanding of them, the New Testament, you can click on things, you learn more about them, you can learn how they're used in the common church and then you can take the insert that we've given you and you can see where your gift lines up with possible ministry opportunities right here and then there's a contact number for you to contact and do the next right thing because we cannot stay here if you are not plugged in and giving yourself fully to the person of Jesus through the use of your spiritual gifts. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, there's a, there's a chance we could, we could um, let me rephrase that. We can't stay here because we've got to see more and more of this, which has come directly from people knowing and using their spiritual gifts. Check this out. So life before Christ was miserable. Uh, a real mess. Started in recovery and I 
prefer not to mention that in my story always, but it's just the reality of it. I had a lot of trouble with my identity and I was uh, really mixed up with drugs and alcohol. My story begins um, pretty much broken. Freely gave myself into addiction because I'm trying to fill that hole. I just wanted to numb it. When I first found the Avenue Church, I was lost, broken, and afraid. Uh, alcoholism was uh, the number one vice. When I was about 13, 14, um, started to experiment with drugs and, and alcohol. I felt like uh, that was where I belonged. And it was only until I was brought to my knees and completely helpless that I realized that there was something that I couldn't do for myself that I needed God for. And he, he made a path for me to be introduced to the Avenue Church and to this wonderful family that I've met here. I came down to South Florida for treatment. And uh, while I was here uh, in treatment, they were taking us to the, to the Av. It took some time for me to accept his love. I finally worked up the courage to publicly announce that I wanted to follow him and get to know him. And that's when I was baptized. Baptism was huge for me, and it was beautiful that my kids got to witness it. Um, they explained that it was an outward expression of that new birth that had taken place in me. I um, wasn't really sure that anything was going to change, but I knew that I loved Jesus. The whole church family there supporting me, and uh, I didn't even know these people yet, and uh, they would soon become my family. It was probably the most important decision of my, my, my entire life. Our old life has been washed away, and come out of the water is our new life, and that's what we celebrate now. An outward sign of an inward work. I was adopted into the family of Christ, and I no longer had to be a slave to these bonds that really held me down. I know that I am loved and, and welcomed. Uh, even through all of my sins and, and my past deeds. By outwardly confessing that to a group of people that now hold me accountable to live that life has made all the difference. Getting baptized was like uh, my first experience of a wedding day. From hopeless to fullness. The pastors and members of this church are now my friends and family. I've been radically renewed as we like to say around here. That is all God and His Spirit working inside of me. God's done a, a lot of work in me and He continues to do it uh, every day and I thank Him for rescuing me. Today, I'm Amanda and I'm beloved. I'm Brendan and I'm loved. I'm Hunter and I'm loved. My name is Dan, I am loved by the Father. I am Nathan, I am loved. I am Christy and I am loved. I am Derek and I am loved. I am Philip and I am loved. I am Kevin and I am loved. I ain't playing no games. Like those, that's, that's real happening right now. And you heard the Avenue Church. They're not saying the Avenue Church is my savior. They're saying Jesus is my savior. But Jesus used a spirit-filled, gift-infused family of God to bring them to this place where they now know Jesus as their treasure. If you were a part of that video, would you just stand? Because we just want to like, like look at you and say, thank you, Lord. God uses this to bring more of that. Let's all stand. Ask him to do more of that. Go to the website. Take the tests. Take, do the next right thing. Contact the ministry lead that fits where you get some information. Let's do this. Let's do this. Father, thank you um, for your gift of salvation. Thank you for the gift of your Holy Spirit. And thank you, Father, for the many gifts that you've given us. We pray that you would fill us with your spirit right now that you would give us these gifts in great abundance, Lord, that we would know and give ourselves to using these gifts for the glory of your name, Jesus, and for the good and salvation of others. Help us in this journey. Father, we trust you, we want you, and we ask for more in Christ's name. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Love you guys.